Thank you, Graham. Um, but you know, my goals are for this are first, I want to make it kind of like fun and entertaining for everybody. And for a lot of you too, I hope it's useful. And then, you know, if it's inspiring for one or two people, that would be pretty sweet as well. So, um, so first, I don't know how much, uh, coach Miller talked about my story, but, um, so we rode in high school together. Um, I was a pretty skinny kid, um, <laughs> but I ended up making, you know, the varsity my senior year of high school. Um, you. And I was a very academically minded uh, individual. And so I ended up going to Princeton where I walked on to the wrong team. Um, and then, you know, I was on the wrong team all four years and I rode with these like, really great guys. Um, and I was pre-med. And so I actually ended up going straight to medical school at USC. And then, um, and then, you know, now I just matched into an eye surgery program at uh, Yale. So I'll be doing, you know, that cool stuff. So basically like when you hear anyone's story, this is what it looks like, you know, um, it looks like it's a really linear progression. And for me, when I tell that story, you think about like Princeton, and maybe like USC medical school, and then like Yale trained eye surgery. And if you like plotted it out over, you know, progress over time, it, it looks like a really linear thing, but it's actually, you know, not like that at all. And there's so many points here, as I'm sure, you know, where you have like successes and failures and it's a very, very jagged line. And there are a lot of points here where I failed. Um, and you know where you know i learned from it and and moved on to the next thing and so what i want to start by doing is talking about how i kind of approach failure and how i think it would be helpful for you guys to think about it um and so i'll start with this this is like ancient history now <laughs> but does anyone recognize this yeah i I'm do curious. of course of course i do yeah any Wait. football fans Wait, I do. Of course, I do. You came out to infamous, uh, yeah, catch on top of the helmet. Yeah, of course. They just referenced yeah. that like this yeah, month. Infamous. So Not infamous. This was the two two. It was a while ago, so you guys were very young. But this was the two thousand eight Super Bowl. Um, the New York Giants versus the Patriots. The Giants. Um, the Patriots were undefeated, and so the Giants were like major underdogs. And uh, there was this part of the game where it was like third down and Eli Manning, the quarterback, uh, threw it in the middle of the field. And David Tyree, this receiver, jumped up, like pinned it to his helmet and made like what I think is the greatest catch of all time, um, which is super inspiring. So I'm actually I think it would be fun if I showed it. I agree. So, actually, yes, please. OK, cool. just so that just the group knows as well. I mean, even though I have my weird phone up because I can't since Mac has um the screen share i am recording all this stuff but this is a legendary legendary play i watched this with my dad the, the second it happened please go ahead yeah plaxico burris yeah baby david tyree this was david tyree can you guys see this yes like i'm sure they can oh, you know what i actually have to share it so you can hear the volume uh, let me try that again Coach, are you a Giants fan or a Patriots fan? Giants fan, of course. Are you joking, Braden? What a, like a oh my god, why would you even ask me that? Because you're like on the border. Oh here. Yeah, that's also kind of true. Boo, Jack, boo. Oh, I need to <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna play this sound. But it's okay, buddy. Okay, I'll just, you don't need to hear the sound. Well, but yeah, I'll yeah, just, just play. yeah, play, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can hear the sound, Mac. You can hear it? Pressure from Thomas off the edge. Eli Manning stays on his feet, airs it out down the field. It is caught by Tyree. So, Inside the 25, the and the timeout cool. taken. This ball's thrown, and Tyree just goes up for it like a basketball player. Harrison. Yeah. So, could you guys hear that or no? It doesn't really matter. You could hear it. Okay. Cool. Um, 
So that's like a remarkable catch. But I think I was like a really big Giants fan at the time. And what I thought was the most remarkable thing about that was that in the practice before that Super Bowl game, that receiver, David Tyree, was dropping every single pass. He could not catch a ball. And so I'm going to play this for you. Um, and I hope I, you, you can hear this as well. The play worked just as the Giants had practiced it two days early. But that day was the only catch Tyree actually made. David Tyree had the worst practice in the history of practices at any level. I've, ne I've never seen anything like it. They were hitting off his chest, off his helmet, straight off his hands, to the point of where Antonio Pierce and I started yelling, beat him up, ball, beat him up, because the ball was beating him to death that day. When I give you a compliment coming out here, now you can't catch a damn thing. David did not have a good day that Friday. Let's put it this way. I remember after practice. Okay, sweet. Oh my gosh, I miss I miss all those old Giants, Mac. I miss all those old Giants. Yeah. God. Um, uh, can you hear me? Gang, you can? can you acknowledge? Can you hear him? Cool. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, all right. So what I think is remarkable about this is like David Tyree has this game. Um, where he, he catches the greatest catch of all time, but the day before he was dropping everything, right? So how, when you're David Tyree in that position, do you like, do you handle that? Like, how do you um, have a practice where you can't catch a ball and not get discouraged about that and then go on the next day and, and have the most incredible catch ever? And uh, I thought that was really interesting. And so like, in terms of my like rowing stuff, um, so I was like, uh, I joined the high school rowing team. I was pretty skinny, um, not very strong. It was a goal of mine to make the first freshman boat our freshman year, like coach Miller, um, did not. So, um, that was pretty disappointing. And then my senior year, I ended up making the varsity boat, um, which was, I was really happy about, but then before the championship, I was pulled from the varsity boat and I was bounced to the two B. And then, you know, I ended up going to Princeton and being a Princeton varsity rower, but I was a recruited athlete. I mean, sorry, I was a walk-on among all these recruited athletes from all over the world who were like incredible. Um, and so it was really hard to stand out. And it was a goal of mine to make the first freshman boat. And uh, I ended up making the first freshman boat. And, you know, it continues, but basically. Yeah, yeah baby. Yeah. But, and then, you know, other boats I've made and got kicked out of, but you have, uh, like, this is kind of just what happens all the time. You have, um, like all of these successes where you achieve this goal, but like throughout there are all of these failures. Um, and it's not linear at all. And so I think the, if you are focused on the outcome entirely, then it's hard to deal with, these failures and not get discouraged. But what I would, you know, recommend to you guys is that you always are focusing like just on getting better. And so if you kind of think about being um, growth oriented versus goal oriented, um, I think that's really useful. So like at all of these points, you can think about getting better. Like every, every single day, it doesn't really matter. Like the success, you succeed great but you still need to get better right and if you fail it you know it doesn't really matter a huge amount you just want to focus again on getting better like at every step you're just getting a little bit better and uh so i mean like the takeaway for this part of what i'm talking about is that goals are important but be growth oriented and um if your focus is on getting better every day, you'll be less discouraged by failures and successes. And you'll end up achieving what you want, mostly despite these major failures, because you continue to improve. Mac, and Mac, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, and 
it's cool because it changes the focus from the end point to the journey. So when you're focused on like one thing, like winning the championship or like own, like making this boat, you're just focusing on some point in the future. But if you're focusing on getting better, you're really focused on the present. So you're just focused on every single day getting better. I know I've said that a million times, but that's like, it's so key for everything, like in rowing, in school, in your career, it's really important. Um, and so you might be like wondering, like if the goal is to get better, how do you get better most effectively? Um, so that's what I'll be talking about next. Um, I mean, so like in the boat, you know, the <laughs> goal is to apply effort where it has the greatest leverage. And it basically, I mean, you want to improve the things that need to be improved and that are the weakest and uh, not spend time trying to improve the things that don't need to be improved. And that sounds like common sense, but it's actually a little bit more challenging in practice. And what you really want to focus on, like in everything and rowing in school is strengthening the weak parts. Um, and if you think about progress and improvement, it's really much easier to improve things that you're bad at. And that's because when you're bad at something, you improve really quickly. And then you like start to plateau. And like, it takes a huge amount of effort to get any marginal benefit. And like, this is true of rowing, you know, when you guys start rowing, yes, your first two yes. might be like, really bad, right? And your next 2k, you might drop like 30 seconds, like something crazy. And when you start, you're going to be like shaving off so much time. But when you get to like being a national team, like Olympic rower, like Coach Miller, it's really hard to get better. It takes like a tremendous amount of effort. And so uh, like, you will always get the most gains, like improve the fastest by improving things you're bad at. And so you like really need to seek out things you are bad at and be critical about that and improve those things rather like than being comfortable and doing the things you're good at. You're looking for things you're bad at. And, uh, oh, and so like, I'll tell a story about myself when I was a sophomore on the high school rowing team, <laughs> there was this idea among our team that, um, or maybe it was just my idea that a lot of the, like you could shave a lot of time off your 2k based on like mental toughness and will. And that is important, right? Um, but you're not going to drop from like a 715 to a 645 because, um, of will alone. And so I would do these two Ks and like get the same exact thing score and I'd be super frustrated and I would think it would be a mental toughness problem, but it wasn't a mental toughness problem. I was just really weak and I, I didn't have the like foundational strength that you guys are building now. I didn't even know it was a thing people did until like my senior year on the rowing team when I was kind of doing what, what you guys were doing and I dropped a lot of time and then I, got to Princeton and I saw how hard they work and I dropped like, like when I started training like them and focusing on getting stronger, I dropped so much time. Um, and so I didn't even know what the weak parts really were and what needed to be fixed. And so, um, you like really have to think critically about your weaknesses and I love this diagram. Um, so I'll tell the story behind this. Oh, yes, Mac. This is great. Have you seen this, Bram? No, I have not. But Mac and okay. I used to spend a lot of time, uh, what, on your uh, your flight simulator when we were kids? Yeah. Yeah. So this is really cool. So in World War II, the U.S. Air Force wanted to determine um, basically like where their planes were getting shot and where they should strengthen the planes because they wanted like more planes to return from combat without being shot down. That like makes a lot of sense. And so they started collecting data on where these planes returning from combat had bullet holes. And so their planes, they go out to battle, they come back, they return, and then they like 
write down where the bullet holes are. And they recorded this data. And so the red dots are where the planes returning from battle had bullet holes. So if you're trying to strengthen this plane, um, does any brave soul want to guess where you would put the extra armor? On the wings? Where on the wings? Uh, like the ends so that they can fly. Like where the red dots are? Like where the bullet holes are? Um, no, because if they came back, that means that um, they were able to fly with those bullet holes. Damn, Brayden crushed it. Exactly, yeah. So this is data taken from the planes that returned home right? They made it back. They survived. So you'd think like, oh, these were all the places where the planes were shot. You need to put more armor where the planes were shot, right? But the planes that were shot in the cockpit, right? They didn't make it back. So really this is showing where planes can get shot and survive. Does that make sense? So like the truth is you'd put like extra armor on the cockpit or like the places where you don't see red dots. So it's just like a mental exercise to think about. Sometimes it's, it's hard to like really figure out what your weaknesses are. And so um, like, how do you know what you're bad at? Um, I mean, my first advice for that would be to ask and to like seek out feedback and criticism. Um, and this goes for like rowing and also academics. Um, in terms of academics, like if you're not performing and you get a bad grade or get like a bad essay um, in college or in high school, like the first thing I would recommend is meeting with your teacher or professor and saying, you know, it always helps to say you love this class. Like, hey, I really love this <laughs> class. I really want to do better. Um, and I was hoping you could like give me feedback and tell me where I can improve and like how I can improve these specific things. And um, yeah, they'll always tell you things that will help and they'll be on your team um, and they'll know you're trying to work hard. And that way you can like figure out what you're, what needs to be improved and like improve those things. So you're not spinning your wheels on things that maybe might not help. And my second point for that would be to like when you're studying for something to test yourself. So um, like you really want to focus on studying the things you don't know. And it's really easy to study things you do know or to study everything. Um, but you need to check whether you know something. So when you're studying your notes, what I used to do is I used to like cover parts of my notes and then see if I like knew what was under my hand. And if I got it, I'd like put it aside and I wouldn't come back to it. And if you don't get it, you come back to it. So that way your studying is like really focused and you're not wasting time on things you already know. Um, and, uh, you know, this is something like my last point, really. Um, there are always people who have done it in like rowing and in academics and in your career. And so like my advice for this would be to seek out people who have already done what you want to do. Like if you're a rower in, a, in college and you got there your freshman year and there's a junior or senior that you admire, um, ask them, you know, like, like what did you do your freshman year or like, like how, like, what would you recommend as a freshman I start doing? Or just like watch them. Because um, you'll learn more from these people than anything you could possibly learn. And I really learned this a lot in medical school. Um, like having a mentor at every level is so important. Like if you get to college and you want to go to medical school, um, I would recommend having, like finding a, a junior or senior that you can ask questions who's like going through the application process who can say, you can ask like, what should I do? You know, like, I don't know anything. I don't know what I need in my application. Do you have any advice for what I should do? 
if you can find like reach out to a medical student through the like alumni network if your school has one find a medical student and say like hey i'm a freshman at your school and i really want to go to medical school can we talk about like what advice you would have for somebody um that's a freshman and you know find a doctor you know and say like what advice you have for someone that would want to go to medical school and like people at every like every level are going to have different advice for you based on the position they're in so um like getting a mentor at every single level um is uh will be really helpful so and mac i can concur as well i'm sorry yeah. i wouldn't be to the place that i am today without having uh reaching out to people and 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 putting myself out there uh to explore um and the mentors that i have now to this day i am so close with because i yeah. appreciate all of all of the feedback and all of the um the time we spent together it it it, it means a lot um in the long term but mac I, I i couldn't absolutely agree more than that 110 percent, sir yeah thanks um and so that was really what i wanted to tell you guys so if you're going to remember anything my summary is to be growth oriented rather than goal oriented um improve the weak parts and learn from others who have already succeeded um and i'm like happy to answer any kind of questions but that was kind of the more formal part of what i wanted to tell you guys mac thank you so much gang we're we're open for questions if you'd like it's definitely getting close to seven but um, for anyone that would like to speak up, please, this is our opportunity, so don't be shy. Mac, oh, by the way, uh, beautiful presentation. I loved, I loved, I loved the simplicity of it, by the way. Thanks. It was really concise, and your feedback was beautiful. I, and I sincerely mean that. I really do mean that. Thank you. So, so, so gang, uh, please take it away, if you'd like to. Can I ask something, please? yeah um so like when it came to like like how did your college education kind of shape like the rest of your life i guess like how yeah like, how did it help you in that sense of like finding your way of what you wanted to do yeah so for like what maybe one of the benefits of medicine is that it is kind of a more like linear path and that you kind of know what you're you're doing um and honestly, that's part of the reason I was drawn to it. I kind of liked having a structured, like a structured plan. Like I knew that I was going from college to medical school and that was kind of all planned out for me. Um, but even my path to medical school wasn't linear. Like I was a history major um, and, uh, and I was pre-med. And so, I mean, I mean, I would say just like find things you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to know like kind of what careers are when you're in college. It's it's not something like, I didn't really know what people do, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah, like people, it's like easy to think about like doctor, lawyer, engineer, finance, but they're all of these different jobs. Um, so I would say just like find what you're interested in and then kind of based on your interest, Try to connect with people like alumni in mm -hmm. the alumni network who kind of like have cool jobs mm -hmm. uh, and they'll like point you in the direction of something that might interest you and uh, try it like try it over the summer and you might hate it and then you'll like pivot to something else. So you're like always kind of exploring new things and you'll settle on something you like. Yeah. Thank you for the advice. I really appreciate it. I needed it. Okay. Um, going into college, did you have um, an idea of what you wanted to do or did you kind of figure out while you were there and had that work? I didn't know at all. Like I didn't know anything. So I, <laughs> um, I have this vague idea that maybe I wanted to do medicine, but I didn't really know. Um, I didn't even know I wanted to like row for certain because I wasn't recruited. Um, but like when I got there, I, part of what 
made me decide I, I really wanted to do rowing at least was the team and the people. Um, and I just felt a connection with those people and I really admired them. And in terms of what I wanted to do for my career, um, no, I had no idea what I was doing. Like, you don't really have to know what you're doing. Um, but just kind of explore, like I said before, and find things you're interested in. You're not going to know. You're just not going to know. You just have to be comfortable not knowing, but being open to different things and just focusing on improving yourself every day. And when the opportunity arises, you'll be ready. Okay, thank you. That's good to hear. Yeah. I have a question. So yeah. how did you like maintain a good school, like crew life balance? Cause I know medical school and, or not medical school, but just like college and rowing at that level in general is just hard to you know, yeah. manage. Yeah. So rowing is like a lot of time. Um, I actually, I mean, I was someone that was just really always focused on doing things that were, um, like putting effort in the right places, kind of like I said. And actually, <laughs> uh, Graham, do you remember I wrote a book on this? Yeah, I tried giving it to Jonathan, but I couldn't find it on Amazon. It's gone I now. I took it down. I can, uh, do you want me to send you a PDF of the book and then? Actually, yes, please. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Are you so, kidding me? Absolutely. And I'll distribute to the whole group, 110%. Yeah. I already told all of them that you wrote a book. Oh, cool. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Nope, um, yep. I took it down because I didn't know what like program directors at these residency programs would think of me writing a book that like, when you look at it on the surface, the way I tried to like sell it was like, get good grades with less effort, but I wasn't really going for like, take the easy road. It was more like, how do you manage doing a lot of different things and being successful in all of them? Um, and Mac, it's not, I'm like, sorry to interrupt, but I think that that book, beyond you can probably believe would be so valuable yeah at least to this group because you've given your insight but, totally but but yeah. um yes yeah but that's like the crux of the book basically um apply effort in the right places and there will be like tips in the book and if you have any questions um i have like an email address in there which isn't doesn't exist anymore but um i'm sure graham can well, they have your email now, and I expect some thank you notes. Oh, good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you have questions, let me know. But all the tips are in there. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? I think so. Thank you. All right, gang. Speak now or forever hold your peace. All right, gang. All right. So let's call it a day, Mac. I want to thank you so much profusely yeah of course for for giving us your time um, yeah and, and and gang uh even though mac won't be with us tomorrow um tomorrow afternoon if you have any lingering questions um please let me know um hopefully i can answer them and if not um i can talk to mac and and we can coordinate and stuff but but thanks for your time everybody i know it's getting late everyone had a long session let's get some food in our system um, and get ourselves ready for tomorrow. Uh, but thank you for everybody here. I know, again, long sessions, and it's tough to jump right into a lecture or so, but Mac, beautifully said. Thanks. I, yeah. I, I, I hope I, it looks useful for you guys. I mean, all right, give Mac some thumbs up here. I mean, I honestly think everything he talked about was absolutely, yeah, look at, okay, yes. So yeah, you couldn't have couldn't have hit the the nail on the head um, more than more than uh, this evening, Max. So thank you so much. Nice. All right.